gates of the sermon. Amen. How many of you were blessed by this message? Okay, there's three, three, four, five people. The rest, okay, so the rest of you that were not blessed, I hope that you are blessed today. Amen. Amen. I'll do my best to try and make sure that uh, uh, what I convey bring blessing because as a as a preacher or as a pastor or as a uh, one who stands in to bring the word of God, our uh, responsibility is always to make sure that we may sometimes see right, but um, to communicate it so that people get it is a challenge. Amen. Uh, but, uh, but we know that with the help of the Holy Spirit, um, uh, we we have every tool uh, in heaven available to us. But sometimes we may not be able to uh, really uh, use those resources, heavenly resources, well. Which is, uh, if that happens, is the man's fault. It's not God's fault. It's my fault. Amen. Uh, how I, I may communicate because we all come from different levels, or we are in different state in life concerning our spiritual lives, concerning our development. So some uh, just have very little uh, understanding of scripture. Some may be way up there. Some may be in the middle. Some may be somewhere. So it's usually the key is to bring the message that who from the one who has very little uh, would be able to get something. And the one who is in the mid middle uh, with the spiritual development or understanding will also get something. And the one who is advanced will also get something. But sometimes, <laughs> some may miss out. But if he does that, just pray for me. Amen? Pray for me that God will give me the wisdom to present his word so that everyone is blessed. Amen? Um, I'm going to continue with this message and, and then I'll, I'll put it on the shelf till next year. Because I believe that the six gates have a great, 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 uh, uh, great things uh, that once we get it properly, it's going to rev revolutionize one's spiritual life, one's, even the, your physical life, your natural life will be, will be tra transformed. And, uh, um, but last week I talked about the ear. We saw in the scripture where Jesus engaged uh, in the book of Matthew, engaged the disciples and wanted to uh, 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 get their perspective as to what they are hearing to help them to understand the importance of the ear in discerning God godly things and in discerning one, the things of the physical, even in the natural realm and the spiritual realm. And then today I'm going to go to Jeremiah, the book of Jeremiah chapter uh, 1. I'll get just a uh, pick on verse 10 to uh, 13. Just about four verses out there, in there, and uh, we're going to bring some five perspectives concerning the eye. Say the eye. The eyes. Uh, and because the eyes gives us sight. As the ears gives us ability to hear, God gave us eyes to have sight so that we can be able to see things in the natural that also have spiritual implications have spiritual uh, 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 um, spiritual meanings uh, to things we see in the physical and so um, Ezekiel chapter 37 I will also touch on that verse 20 verse 37 uh, just two verses just to bring perspective concerning the eye or the eyes God says that in Jeremiah chapter two, uh, t uh, t uh, 1 verse 10 I'm going to read quickly and then some places I'll ask Irene to help me when we get there. See, I have this day set thee over the nations and over the kingdoms to root out and to pull down and destroy and to throw down, to build and to plant. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to, unto me saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? What do you see? And I said, I see a rod of an almond tree. Verse 12. Then said the Lord unto me, Thy house has well seen. So God is acknowledging that he has seen properly. Verse uh, continue. For I will hasten my word to perform it. And the word of the Lord came unto me the second time, saying, What seest thou? And I said, I see a seething pot, and the face thereof is toward 
the north. I'm going to go to uh, read Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter, chapter 37, verse 1 and 2, and then I'll bring the perspective as to what does this, or what does this mean, or what is this scripture trying to uh, tell us, or to uh, want us to uh, glean from these verses. Ezekiel chapter 37, verse 1 and 2. The hand of the Lord was upon me and carried me out in the spirit of the Lord and set me down in the midst of the valley, which was full of bones and caused me to pass by them round about. And behold, there were very many in the open valley and lo, they were very dry. See, God took his prophet, took his son, took a child of God, a man of God, a woman of God. In this case, Jeremiah represents all of us, whether we are male or female. And, and, and he took him to a place and he wanted him to see something. Right? And he wanted him to see and he saw something. And when you read the whole of chapter 37, you will see because of what he saw, God began to do something, interact with him, and to cause him to exert certain abilities in him. Which presupposes that when we see, see, God created you. He created us. He formed us. He released us from our mother's womb for a purpose. And until we see that purpose will not come to fruition. And I will show you a few things here. Out of this scripture comes, there are five things I want to talk to you about, about the eye or the human sight, your eyes, and the sight you're supposed to have and what it's supposed to do to you and to the people and the city and the environment around us. In the church, until you see properly, you will not be able to be fulfill your destiny within the church and outside of the church. With your career or your profession, until you see, see, there may be people, two people or three people or however many people that may go to the same school, sat, sit under the same professor, and the professor may be a genius, and they all sit under the same professor. The same professor teaches them or instructs them of the things of the, that which they are learning. And out of the maybe 10 of them, one would excel or two may excel and the rest will not excel. What is the difference? The difference is the ones who are able to see what they are being taught. They all learn. They are all, it's not that, see, for them to go to the university to either do master's or the first degree or master's degree or a PhD, which means they are all intelligent. If you are not intelligent, you won't go to that level. But I'm, I may talk about two things. I'm going to share something else. Sometimes we think that when you go to university and go to a PhD, a master's degree, or have some degree, then you are intelligent. But I will come to that and say something else. But I'm just using this to set an example. Yes, or it takes an intelligence to go to university. Yes, it takes an intelligence to be able to do masters. It takes an intelligence uh, to do a PhD, to graduate with a doctor's degree, I mean, and so forth. It takes a lot of discipline, a lot of work, hard work, a lot of sleepless nights, and studying, and researching, and writing your research, and articulating. See, even those that are writing, and reading the books, and scanning through the uh, textbooks that they've given them, they're supposed to see something that we they are reading, in order to then take it, and articulate, make it their own, and write something. Is that true or yes? I haven't been to university, but I think I know a little bit. So when you are reading a book or reading somebody's book or reading any content, you are supposed to see some reasoning and some understanding to articulate that in, and then write it out so that your re researcher, I mean your uh, professor will look at it and say, man, there's, there's something in this. This, this is worth to, to, to pursue your master's. This is worth to pursue your PhD and so forth. 
So what is the difference of those who succeed when they have PhD or master's degree or a degree uh, among the thousands that sat under the same professor and the rest, the others didn't? It's not that they are dumb. It's not that the professor was favorite, favorite, uh, had favoritism and took the other ones on the side outside of the rest and taught them extra. No, they all sat under the same room. They all sat under the same time. They all sat under the same season. If it were hot in the room, they all felt it. If it were cold, they all felt it. So one can say, well, it was, the room was so cold, I couldn't concentrate. The others was also feeling the cold. Is that true? Yes. No, so what is what am I trying to say? What I'm trying to say is that one is whatever you are doing, whatever, wherever you go, or whatever sitting you sit under, whether it's we sit in this room, the restored house chapel, we are sitting under the same ministry, and the preaching is the same person, or sometimes different person, but the same people within the context of the church. So we are sitting under Christ, and Christ is the preacher and the teacher of the word because it is we are we are sitting under the same Holy Spirit. Whether I am preaching or somebody else is preaching, we are supposed to be the Holy Spirit is supposed to be teaching us and preaching and showing us things. So we're sitting under the same anointing. Amen. Though the anointings might vary a little bit, but or the presentations might vary a little bit, but it's the same spirit, the same father. Now, the difference of those who excel in what they, they are able to do is the ones who see in their mind's eye. The ones who see properly, not just see. Because they are all seeing, they are all, we are all hearing the same message, the same text. We are seeing the same, I mean, seeing what the, the, the ex examples that are given, the uh, illustrations that are being used. We are all trying to imagine it in our mind. But the ones who see it properly are the ones who are going to excel. So out of the sight, God wants us to know that our sight plays an important role in discerning. And when we discern right, that's where the blessing is. When we discern right, but whether by the hearing, as I spoke last week, or bread the message last week, or by the eyes, it is going to set you pre, I mean, set you at a place to excel in, in, in anything you do, whether business, ministry, and education, and whatnot. Now, I coined this verse 10 of the same chapter, Jeremiah chapter, chapter, um, chapter 1. The first one I coined it uh, dazed. You may say, what, does they, what, what do you mean by dazed? D-A-Z-E-D. When you see things, you get dazed. We don't, in North America, you don't use that word. We don't hear that word. Very uh, commonly, the vocabulary. I don't know what what would you call days in days? Mesmerize. That's what I'm looking at. Mesmerize. Because in the British British terminologies, they use certain terminologies uh, to uh, so days be you you get mesmerized. Where see God wants to mesmerize you and I. He wants you to get days. He wants to reveal things to you to get you days. He wants you to become dumbfounded. He wants you to become, why does he want you to be mesmerized or want you to be dazed or the dumbfounded? Because he is going to use you to overcome things. Amen? He wants to stretch your imagination and stretch your thinking and stretch your, your being to a place where you will be able to become an overcomer. But until you see certain things that will challenge you beyond where you are comfortable with, you say, well, this, I mean, for, is for the other people to do, not me. I mean, as for me, you see, whenever we say that, which means we are, we are not seeing ourselves where God wants us to be. But God wants us to show and reveal things to us, to bring us to a daze or a, to mesmerize and say, wow, this is interesting. I want to know more about it. Even though I don't see myself right now that I can do it, but i just curious. I want to know more. He wants us to have curiosity. Amen? I'll take, uh, the, uh, for example, the scripture that, I'm, that I just read in Ezekiel. God took, uh, what? Uh, he took Ezekiel to a place of a graveyard. And Ezekiel saw dry bones. He was probably imagining and wondering, oh, I mean, what good thing can come out from this place? This is a place of death. This is a place of 
I mean, dreams that are, uh, have died and buried. This is a place where there is no hope. This is a place where people, people, I mean, they, there's no more uh, sinews. Sinews is flesh on the, on the, on, on, on the bones that I'm only seeing dry bones. You and I may say, right, right now, my life is dry. I'm, I don't see anything in me. I don't see any hope in me. I, I think that I've done my best, but right now I am dry or my, my finances are dry. My family is dry. My, I mean, my academic abilities are, are dry. I can't go further. I can't, I, I just want to end here with, with the degree. But God is saying that, you know, I want to bring it to a place. You may see dry bones, but you can prophesy upon the dry bone. Amen? See, what you see and what comes within you, what God, see, God was bringing him to show him that, no, is what you see may see the reality is that you can see a reality or the facts of life that things are tough things are difficult there's no way out but god is saying i want to bring you to a place to let you know what you are seeing is true it is a fact but i can override truth and fact because i am the truth amen so sometimes we most of us stay i mean give up in pursuit of what God is calling us to do because we look at the circumstances, the situation is dry. How can life be in a dry bone? But God say, prophesy. Which means, speak into your situation. Speak into the situation. Somebody may come to your life. And, and when I say somebody, they may come to church. They may come to you and visit you and they share their situation. It looks like there is no hope in their, I mean, their relationship going forward. All you see is um, this man or this woman. No, there is no hope because things have gone past a, salv a salvaging. But when you are walking with sight, when you are walking with vision, you can say, though the fact is that this marriage seems like it's gone because the man has gone far. This marriage looks like it's gone because the woman has gone far. But the, but the spirit of the Lord will say to you, uh, though the situation, the marriage relationship is dry, but speak positively and speak life into the marriage for it shall resurrect. Amen? That is what I mean, we have to take this, what we are reading, and say, okay, how can we apply it to our situation? You may, some of us may say, well, I mean, I've, for, I've, 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 I've not been able to go further in education, and I'm now I'm a bit old. How, can I really go and sit among young people and study? Because these this young people, they are very quick. They, they blink and they see things in the, through the, I mean, how can I research? I don't even know how to punch into a phone and punch, and for them, they just they do crack -ta -ta -ta, and things are just flowing for me. But God is saying that even though your fingers may dry, be dry and may not move as fast as the younger ones, but you can still go forward. Amen? Yeah, give God a hand clap. So in that sense, when we are able to see Jeremiah chapter, uh, the, the chapter uh, 1 verse 10, see, God started the chapter, I mean, sorry, the verse by saying, see. So, which means you and I must see. God is telling you, see. See, I have this day set thee over what? the nations and over the kingdoms. Why? Until you see, you will not be able what? to root out. What does that mean? See, I have, I have this day set thee, set you, set me, set us. What? Over the nations and over the kingdoms. Now, when you look at this scripture, you can say, well, I mean, you got a, you got a daze. You got a, you are mesmerized. How can I, me, common person who nobody knows me be, be over nations and over kingdoms? Who am I? Who are you? Who are we? I am at the days that God is saying that he set me, he set you and I over the nations. Are you on other days? For me, I'm dazing. I'm mesmerized. You are nobody. According to the world standards. But God said, I've set you over the nations. Which means when you and I stand in this place to begin to decree a thing, it shall happen. Over this nation. 
over the continent, over the world. Because he said, I've set you over not the nation, but nations. Right? Over nations. And over kingdoms, not just one. Which means the kings and the queens are under our authority. But you and I say, well, to me, I'm, I'm mesmerized. How can I be over a, a queen, queen of England? But I am, and you are. But, but when the king and the queens come, we go and we are, fl- I mean, we are just getting, we, mes- we get mesmerized by their presence, right? But we should be pe- mesmerized by God, his word. More than kings and queens because we are exalted above what? Principal, not even, see, principalities, and, principality, queens and queen, kings are principles over a nation. And that's why Satan and the demons usually entrench themselves. If they want to control a nation, they entrench themselves over the royal family. And, and where we come from or where we grew up, the, 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 the demonic enclaves are in the chief's palaces. So before they, 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 they ordain a chief, when a chief passes, and they, go, they take them through initiation to initiate them into demonic powers. Because they are going to be controlling the territory. And it does happen in the, the Queen of England. The things that we see there, sometimes we don't, we don't think about it. When you go into their places, there are certain places you can't enter. Only the family can enter. No one will enter. Because there are seven secrets in them. And that's why they have, they have authority to rule. But they are just mere men like you and I. God is saying you should see yourself higher than the king of this world. Higher than the queen of them. Because actually the Bible says you and I are a royal priesthood. Not a royalty of human flesh, but of the spirit. Amen. God is wants you and I to be days, wants us to see ourselves actually higher, not to puff ourselves up, not to think highly of ourselves above others, but to know your place and to see yourself in that place. When you see that place, you are able to see where you are in God, then your talk changes. Your way of doing things changes. It's not, it's not about who is somebody to come and tell you or be, or, I mean, saying that who this, I mean, you are, you are beautiful. You, are, you know that you are beautiful. Inside you, you can tell. Inside you, I mean, people might call you ugly, but inside you, you see yourself, wow, I'm the queen. <laughs> so when somebody comes and you just laugh, you don't know what you're talking about. You know, guys, so, oh, you ran to your home and say, the, at work, that lady was calling me ugly. I mean, you are depressed through, I, I can't go to work anymore, and you are losing paycheck, and the bills are chasing you. I don't want to work anymore. I'm tired of work. I mean, what? See yourself. You are seated in high places. Amen? God says that you will uh, what? root out. Before you can root out, you must see. For anyone to be able to overcome anything in your life, you must first of all be able to see. Uh, uh, Anything. If you have addiction, if you have anything that is controlling you and you want to get out and you are struggling, you go to counseling, you go to this, you pray and and it's not happening, I, I can guarantee you 100%. The moment you see that thing and see your place in God, that thing will be gone like that. You don't need fasting and praying. You just need to declare what you have seen. For me, any problem that I enter into or I have entered in the past, I'm always praying to be able to see what I am going through. Not about, not to see it, just to know it for knowing sake. Once I see it and identify it, it is gone. But if I am unable to see it, it will last as long as until I see it. So the power is in seeing. He said you root out, you cast out. So which means if you have an addiction for that thing to be cast out, you must see what it is. Even the world uses that system. I'm talking about well without without a, a church. When you go for addiction, uh, places of addiction, 
when they want to take you. They, what, what do they do? They want you to be sober for what? Sometimes they say 24 hours or 48 hours or depending on the place, 72 hours before they will take you in. And, and even for them to take you, they want to get you to understand, you, to get you to see your problem. If you don't see a problem, they can't help you. Is that true or yes? Yeah, I mean, we see on TV that this help, help places. They say, they, so that's all. They call family around. They sit and they want to get the person to see their problem. Uh, well, uh, before they will take them in. If you don't, if you don't, if you don't see it, they won't take you in. Even though they love you, they want to help you, they can't they can help you with until you see. So even the world uses this principle. For us as spiritual beings, we must see not only the physical, but we must see the spirit realm. Because that's where power is. Without the spirit, there is no power. Amen? So we, uh, secondly, it talks about casting out, I mean, verse, the same verse 10, verse, verse 10 of the chapter 1 of Jeremiah. It talks about, right, root out and pull down and what? Destroy. We are called as men of God, to destroy anything that is not of God. As women of God, to destroy anything that is not of God. In your personal life, and in the lives of people around you. Amen? Destroy ungodly attitudes. Destroy lust. Destroy, I mean, the things that are not of God, that you know that they are not of God, and they are eating you up. You are supposed to see the problem, what is eating you up, so that you can be able to root it out. And if you see it and you are not uh, rooting it out, then you have no excuse. You can't blame God. God says, I brought you and says, see, this is your problem. It's not about what people are saying. It's not about what people have said. But are you seeing it yourself? If you are seeing it, what is it? Then you have to add, I mean, that's where I mean, we, we have to, even to come into the kingdom of God, to receive Jesus Christ, you must be able to see Jesus. To receive healing, you must be able to see Jesus. That he's able to heal you. If you don't, can't see it in your mind's eye, there is no healing. The woman that had the issue of bleeding for 12 years, that went around physicians, went to specialists. In those days, they also have 2,000 years ago, they have specialists. They, 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 they have their own technology at that time. It may not be the same as now. But they, and the Bible said that she went and spent all her life savings to try to look for healing to stop that bleeding. And one day the Bible said she heard about Jesus. Last week I talked about hearing. And when she heard, she discerned that this is my place of healing. And then what did she have to do? She had to go and see Jesus. She could have probably stood where she was and just claimed the word and she would have got a healing. But she said, I must go and see this man. I've heard about a man. She descend. I must go and see. And if I can but touch, for her to touch the garment of Christ, she must be able to see the garment to touch it. Amen? I hope you are getting something out of that. Whenever we hear the word of God, the word of God is meant to open our minds because the word of God is light. And when light comes, it enables us to see. Is that true or yes? And when you are able, so whenever preaching, wherever you hear preaching, whether it's in this church or anywhere or on the radio, as long as, as soon as, when you are hearing, listening to a message, always try to see what the message is about. Not just get caught up in the words and so forth, but see through the words what is the message. And once you are able to see, that's where the blessing is. The woman had a message about Christ. She heard it and she discerned 
that indeed this man is a place, a person that can bring healing to me. Even though, she, see, you and I, or uh, most people would have said, you know what, I give, I went to, I've heard about every specialist. I spent all my money. Now I am broke. I don't even, I don't, I can't trust anybody anymore. Even though I heard about this man, oh my, he's probably one of the physicians who thinks, well, says that he, he's, he has power to heal. I went to many people. I, they took my money. All my money. Now I am broke. I have no money anymore. I'm not going to try. But she had hope because she had something. When she descends, you see, when you descend right, it will lead you to the next step of victory. Amen? She saw, she had, she saw, and she was healed. Now, the other thing, one in verse 10, I, I want to look at Jeremiah 24. Uh, we jumped, uh, Irene, I mean, help, uh, help me to read this one. Uh, Jeremiah 24, verse 3. Verse 3, um, we just read verse 3 uh, for a moment. And this also comes from Jeremiah verse 1, verse, uh, verse 1 and 10, chapter 1, verse 10. The latter part of it, it will be built up or plant. He says that when, we, we, we sh when you see you up, uh, up root out, you will build and you will what? Plant. He's talking about planting. But Jeremiah 24, verse 3, please read our in. Then said the Lord unto me, what seest thou, Jeremiah? What seest thou? God is emphasizing, uh, what are you seeing, the restored house? What seest you? What are you seeing? Are you seeing discouragement? Or you see a way out of discouragement? Are you seeing, I mean, poverty? Or you seeing a way out of poverty? Are you seeing, I mean, uh, doom and gloom? If you see, what you see would always be the thing that you experience. I will explain a little better. Because you can see doom and gloom. But then when you see doom and gloom, you must see a way out of doom and gloom. If you don't see a way out of that doom and gloom, you will remain there. Depression. One time I went through depression, long time ago. And, uh, and I, I thank God for going through that. And say, and you say, why did you thank God for going through depression? Because it helped me to understand depression. It happened because it was like I was in a, 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 a tunnel. And a tunnel, literally, the world is huge around me, but I'm in a tunnel. And I can't see anything outside of the, this tunnel that I'm in. And all I'm seeing is the problem and the challenge and all that. And there's no way out. On the left, it's like a, a wall of whatever it is. It could be debt or a wall of bricks or whatever. There's no way out. And it was there for a long time until one day when I saw that in, even in this tunnel, there is a way that God will create for me to come out. And the moment I saw that, phew, Depression left. I didn't take one single drug. So ability to see is powerful. It's more than a drug. It's more than Prozac. The world would like us to stay in that tunnel so that they can be making billions of us with Prozac. But God is saying, I have a better pill for you. The pill that I have for you, the medication that I have is in your eyes. What do you see? Please continue. And I said, figs, the good figs, very good, and the evil, very evil that cannot be eaten. They are so evil. So this is somebody who is seeing doom and gloom. What seest thou, Jeremiah? And I said, figs, first of all, you see great things. Figs uh, uh, um, um, uh, represent healing because fig, fig, fig trees are very nutritious. Figs, and he said the good figs, so which means there, is, there are bad figs. And there are good figs, right? And then he went further and said, uh, 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 and, uh, good figs and very good figs. You go back to that particular one. You go back to it. And then he says, and the evil, and very evil, that cannot be eaten, they are so evil. So he saw two things. So how do you see? Do you always see singular or you see more than one? Sometimes we have we we get fixated on one thing. We just see only the bad. Everything is bad. Everything is negative. We only see the negative. But here we see that this was a power in the making. Why, why, am, I, why am I saying that? See, Jeremiah, I always, whenever I read scripture and I see two things, 
I see in the natural realm, I try to look at natural examples. I look at a, 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 a and I use this illustration a lot, is that the, the car or a vehicle or a plane or a ship or a, whatever that is movable, that moves great things into great places, I have what? They, for it to move, you need the battery. The battery. In your phone, you have a battery. In your watch, you have a battery. In your car, you have a battery. In a plane, there is a battery. Anything that is have a mechanism, or a, 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 even before the electronics start to work, you need a battery to, see, to, to, to start the engine. And in the battery, there is two terminals. There's a negative terminal and a positive terminal. If you take the, uh, the, the, the cable, from the starter that runs from the starter and, and put it on only the positive one in, it's not going anywhere. You take the negative, you remove the positive and put it aside and put the negative alone, it's not going. But when you combine the two, power. Amen? Amen. So it, it's, it's okay to see, I mean, we are human beings. We see a lot of things that are not pleasant, but you are, we can avoid them. They are inevitable. But don't fix, don't get fixated on the negative alone. Most Christians or most people are always struggling with this one. We get so fixated on the negative and negative, everything negative. When positive is showing up, even we see negative. And that's where we don't move forward. God wants you to see like Jeremiah. He saw the negative and he saw the positive. Let's go to verse 4. Verse 4. And, 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 and again, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, verse, Keep going. Thou sayest the Lord, the God of Israel, like these good figs, so will I acknowledge them that are carried away captive of Judah, whom I have sent out of this place into the line of the what? The Chaldeans for the good, for their good. Now, God. For you to understand this scripture, God released the church and the, the children of God into captivity under the Chaldeans. If you are study scripture and understand who the Chaldeans are, Chaldeans are soothsayers, they are false prophets, they are demonic worshippers, they are, I mean, go and study about the Chaldeans. These are demonic enclaves. God released his church to the devil because of rebellion. Because they were disobedient. The children of Israel, they went under the Chaldeans. And they were being, but God says that what now, according to what Jeremiah saw, the good and the very good, which means because he saw properly, God is going to deliver the church from the devil. That's what I mean. God is going to deliver your life. You may be under demonic power. You may be under a, 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 a sorcery power. Sometimes people they may see you, they hate you. I mean, these things, we think that they don't happen here, but they do happen here. And they'll cast a spell upon you because you are intelligent in class. One, I mean, in the school system today, most of, I mean, not most, quite a lot of people go and practice with, uh, with, uh, Wicca. Even in elementary to uh, uh, a high school level and the university, they practice Wicca, witchcraft. So if they see you, they don't want, they, they will, but they will be, they will dress nicely. It looks like they have, they have no, they, they don't deal with spiritual things, but they do. There is the demonic one. And, but we pray that any spell that has been released upon you because somebody is jealous of you or envious of you in Jesus' name, because we see that God is our God who is above all principalities and powers. We command such to be removed in the name of Jesus so that you can fulfill your destiny. So because we are called to destroy, you as a Christian, you are called anything that is not good for your life, you must destroy it. Don't entertain it. Don't accept it. Don't say, oh, I'll ask for my life. This is, the, this is my, the way I am. No, 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 no. It may be the way you have been, but until you have seen that that thing you are going through is not meant for you, you need, as soon as you see it, you command it out. Don't accept it. Don't entertain. Don't say, pray for me, pray for me. Yes, you can be prayed for, but until you see it, it won't go. Because de demons, this is how demons work. 
when they attach themselves to you, they cannot possess a Christian, though. As a born-again Christian, demon, you cannot be possessed. But they can influence you. They can touch you. If you are a weak Christian, if you are unprayerful, they can buffet you. They can, I mean, they can miss, I mean, frustrate your life. But they cannot take hold of you to use you. But I mean, they can use you in another way. They play with your mind, and then you begin to do things that normally you will not do. Over the people you really love. It could be your family. It could be your wife. It could be your son. It could be your daughter. The words that proceed out of your mind will be actually, you'll be, you'll be speaking forth curses as opposed to blessing. And some of, some of us do this in the church. But God is saying that you need to see that this is not the will of God. This for your family. This is not the will of God for you to be speaking anything that is negative over your wife. Speaking anything that is negative over your child. Even though if they have caused something, you don't declare curse over them. Because words are powerful. Words are creative. Because the words that we speak, they are spirit and they are life. Jesus said. Because if you and I say we are Christians, then the words that we speak they are spirit and they are life because we say we are Christians, right? So you must be watchful what we speak. And you must see when God, the enemy is trying to agitate you and to frustrate you so that you speak ill over somebody, you must see it so that you are vet set. Amen? Amen? In the name of Jesus. Amen. I want to conclude with two things. Now, Okay, let's go further. Let me read a bit further with uh, uh, Jeremiah, uh, Jeremiah 24. Jeremiah 24 brings really interesting perspective with the scene. Uh, and and the, the, the one that I wanted to, uh, uh, 24 verse, uh, six, uh, we read verse 4, right? Yeah. Yeah, verse 6. And verse 6 says, For I will set my eyes upon them for good, and I will bring them again to this land, and I will build them and not pull them down. And I will plant them and not pluck them up. So, we, which means whenever we are not seeing, because when we read in verse 10, uh, we saw that because Jeremiah was able to see, here God asked me a second time, What do you see, Jeremiah? Or what seest thou, Jeremiah? And he said he saw good things and he saw evil. And because he was able to see right, God say, I'm delivering my people. When you are able to see right, whatsoever is troubling you, you'll be delivered from it. Whatsoever is frustrating you, you'll be delivered from it. Whatsoever is hindering you from, for, to fulfill your destiny, you'll be. But the key is for you and I is to see. And you say, well, how can I see? How do I see? How can we see? Well, the way, a place of, uh, that would, uh, there are two things. There are more than two ways you can see. But the, 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 let me mention three. Fasting is one of the areas to unlock your eyes, spiritual eyes to see. But most of us, we, we think fasting is too much. But actually, it's, 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 it opens your spiritual eyes to see. Your mind's eyes to begin to see. Remember, how many of you realize that when you fasting, your senses become very sharp? Yeah. Whenever I'm fasting, I smell downtown from Vancouver, whatever meals they are cooking there, I can smell them. Even though if, if I'm not fasting, food can be right here, I can smell it. My senses become high alert. So the nose is one of the areas which I think next year I'm going to talk about the, the other senses. The, I'll pick up the six senses I'm going to talk about. I already talked about two. I'm going to go deeper into the two and then talk about the other the other uh, four, because it will, it will really change your life positively and powerfully. Amen? Amen? Now, senses. When you fast, second is the word of God. When you read in the word of God, it, it can be, you can read the Bible as a literature or history book. Or whatever you may, you may. But when you read in the spiritual, I mean, prayerfully reading the word, your eyes are open. You begin to see things that normally, when you are, you would have read that particular verse before, but you didn't see it. How many of you have experienced that? Yes. 
So fasting, the word of God, the Bible, and then prayer is a third one. There are more other ways, but the, these are three are very key. And then the fourth one, let me add the fourth one, worship. Place of worship. When you are worshiping, that's when we come together and we are worshiping. Don't just f try to learn most of the songs so that you don't look at the text. But those who are learning can be looking at it. And just sometimes just close your eyes during worship and just be worshiping. And, and you begin to see your eyes, you'll be seeing things. Sometimes for some of you, I, I don't know some of you, for me when, when I close my eyes, uh, uh, sometimes when we are worshiping here, I begin to hear. Even though there's, it's loud, music is going on, songs are going by, you begin to hear. And sometimes I see imagery. And sometimes you see colors. Like, you know, some way, uh, those of you that use computer uh, to syn synthesize it, to look at music, when you play music, it creates waves, right? You begin to literally see it in, in your eye. You see purple and green and red and light, different kinds of colors. So we are supposed to see in the realm in the, in the realm of the spirit there are things happening around us right in this room that we can't see. But when you are connected with God, your eyes are open to begin to see what is happening. Sometimes he's showing you certain things. And that's where worship becomes dynamic. Your spiritual life becomes dynamic. Amen? Amen? So it's not just that we come here, we sing songs, we feel good, we dance, and then we are going. Then we wait for next uh, Friday or sa Sunday. Okay, man, wow, next, I'm, I'm, next time I'm going to put my shoes and I'm going to move even much better. No, no. <laughs> forget about those things. And forget about who is standing beside you, who is your wife. Just forget about your wife for that moment. It's between you and God. But when you finish, remember your wife. <laughs> Forget about your husband for that. Because it's a personal connectivity with God. Because when you focus on these other things, it will distract you from connecting with God. Amen? Amen. Verse, uh, I go back to Jeremiah. Uh, Irene, help me with Jeremiah chapter. No, you take Amos chapter 7 verse 1. Verse 8, sorry. I'm going to read Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12. I want to bring the... Uh, the, the, the a perspective about discerning by the sight. So when we discern, when we are, we have, we use our eyes. God has given our eyes to have sight, sight to be, to be able to be dazed with what He's He has in store for us, sight to be able to see what is plaguing our nation, plaguing our city, plaguing our family, plaguing our lives, so that we can be able to destroy it. And then the, the, the third thing is also also to discern with our eyes to be able to build things and to plant things and to uproot things and to destroy things and so forth. And then the, the fourth one is when we see properly, uh, which is in Jeremiah chapter 1 verse, verse 12. Keep the, uh, hold on to the, um, the Amos for now. I want to bring this one first. Verse 12, it says, Then said the Lord unto me, Thou hast seen well. For, uh, let me actually go to verse 11 to, there is a place that I, yeah, then, uh, yeah, the verse, uh, verse 11, I'll read from verse 11. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Jeremiah, what seest thou? And I said unto you, I see the rod of Almond, verse 12, then, then said the Lord unto me, thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. What, did, what does this mean? See, first of all, when you see, when we see well, God approve, approve of us. He approved. He said, then the Lord said unto me, thou hast seen, he has, he is. See, when God approve of you, how many of you are looking for people to approve you? The approval of people, approval of bosses, Approval of uh, acquaintances, approval of friends, approval of uh, wives and husbands, approval of, I mean, uh, you want that. See, I know all of us do this because all of us are on Facebook. And the posing, then you start. I'm, 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 I'm amazed when I look at the Facebook sometimes when I go there, I see poses, I see some of you. You pose. <laughs> I say, wow. <laughs> 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 
It's good to pose. I mean, of course, you have to. You are created in God's image. Show God's image. Hey, Raven, you said that's right, right? I see my Raven in posing. I say, wow, you guys are looking great. So we are looking for approval. There's nothing wrong with looking for approval, but they, they, I'll recommend God's approval. When we have God's approval, see, when we see right, God approves of us. And when he approves of us, he is quick to perform concerning you. you, you see, then said the Lord unto me, thou hast seen well. Jeremiah saw well and God acknowledged him. See, when God acknowledges you and I, when God acknowledges us as a church, it doesn't matter what anybody thinks or says. Amen? When God acknowledges you as his daughter and acknowledges you as his son, it doesn't matter what anybody, including your father, may say you are dumb and you are good for nothing. It doesn't matter. Amen? Even though we would love our approval from our parents, obviously, every child, son and daughter, looking for their parents' approval. And sometimes we parents, we fall short of it because we have our own troubles we're dealing with which you don't know of and we it's not an excuse we must approve uh, of our children because children are always looking for approval so that they can be i mean when they are approved they feel confident they become more confident but when we don't approve they become timid even though they have qualities in them so we must identify the qualities and approve of it it's, sometimes i mean i struggle with this myself because growing up i never had once my my parents uh, say that you're doing well, or uncles is always picking up on the, on the, on the, oh man, you could do this, but you should have been doing that. And so I do the same thing to my children. <laughs> like father, like son. But not like mother, like son. Uh, are you getting what I'm saying? So, so I had, I had to, no, you didn't get that one, you lost it. Which, <laughs> my wife is making faith, which is she didn't get it. See, <laughs> I'm like my father, not like my mother. In terms of, my, my mother, she used to encourage me. But my wife, my dad was a hard man. So if I'm hard, they call it chip off the old block. Which means you fell off, you fell off from your, your father, right? Oh, yeah. Chip off the old block, I fell from my father. The man was hard. Like from age five, I can remember going to the farm from age five. And we are in the city bigger than Vancouver. And he lost farming so much that... He would, after work, he has, he did, he has three professions. He was a professional farmer, and he was a, 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 a chef that was in charge of a university like UBC. Actually, the university is bigger and populated than UBC, Legon. And he was a chief chef there in one of the halls there. And he was a tailor who makes suits and so, so he, Every time he's always busy, and he never stepped his, his foot one day in class, in, in primary, elementary school, even in school. And, but he is a hard working, so he takes us after his sowing there, he said, Let's go to the farm. We go farm, it's dark until we come. Then we, from age five. And he never said, Son, you guys are doing well. We go, I grew up, got to. <laughs> Let me lament a little bit. I'm just lamenting a little bit. But he was a great father. Upon all that, see, this is what seems negative, but the man did something that has impacted my life forever. The training he gave me and gave me my siblings, my older brother and I, I travel around the world and I survive everywhere because I could deal with hardship. So that's why I'm saying we may see negative things in our parents, but always see positive also. And when you see the positive thing, your life will be blessed. Amen? Now, God approve of him. What it means that when we see things right, God wants us to see right. Because God asks, let, let, let me say something. God said to Jeremiah, the second time, what seest thou? And then that second thing drew my mind to Genesis chapter, chapter uh, 1 verse 2. Let's look at Genesis chapter 2, 1 verse 2. When God asks a question twice, because I asked him first, he saw right, and he asked him the second time. I was saying, why, why if he saw right first, and why you ask him the second time? Then the Spirit of the Lord said, go to Genesis chapter 1, verse 2. Genesis chapter 1, verse uh, 
verse 2. I'm going to read from verse 1 just to give perspective. And the be- in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Amen? And the earth was without form. See, you are created. You are born again. You are delivered. We are delivered and brought to the state of Christ and from hell to heaven. But it doesn't mean that because you are saved, everything will work out automatically. That's where most Christians get problems. We, 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 we stay and we don't. We don't see God brought us out. God created the heavens and the earth. Correct? Creation. You are created. I am created. We are created. The church is created. But we must see. We are see. We are a born again Christian without vision, ability to see. Is without form. A Christian that does not see properly, you are without form. Does it mean that you don't exist? You do exist. Does it mean that God doesn't love you? He loves you. Does it mean that he doesn't care about you? He cares for you. Because when God created the heavens and earth out of love, he loved the world, he created the earth. Now listen carefully. And the earth was without form and void, which means a Christian's life is void without seeing. When you don't see, you are void. I hope, I hope I'm talking about physical things, but I'm talking about spiritual things at the same thing, at the same time. The moment you begin to see, now let's go there. It says what? And the spirit of God move upon the face of the waters. When you then go to verse 3, verse 4, verse 1, and then God begins to say, let there be, and there was. Let there be, and there was. Because what? Something came and shined light for vision to come. I hope you are getting what I'm saying. The earth was created. You are created. You are born again. And But if you are not seen, when the spirit of God is not in us and in you, you are void. That's what it means. That is how important the Holy Spirit is to your life, to Christians. The earth was without form and it was void. Being a born again Christian without vision is you are Exist, you are created all right, but you are without form and you are void. Void of things that will excite and mesmerize you. Because when the Holy Spirit comes, see, but when the Spirit of God comes, he said, Go back to verse 3, please, uh, uh, Irene. It says that, uh, um, and the Lord said unto me, not Amos, and God said unto him, let there be light. And there was light. That was, he did not say, let there be light without when the earth was void. He did not say, what? Let there be light when the earth was what? When it was without form. Which means, when we see, we are forming, God is forming something in our vision so that he'll be able to speak of his word. Remember Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 12 says that. He said he would, uh, as he sees, he says he will perform what? He will perform his word. Which means when, when we read the Bible, when we don't see a thing, God won't perform anything. When we hear the message being preached, we are not seeing what the message is about. We are, God is not for, we will not perform anything. When we don't see, when they hear a message about healing, and you are not seeing healing, God won't perform healing. That's what it means. It's, you, are, you are hearing all right. The word is creative word. The word will create an image in your mind. But you must connect with that image. Then God will perform it. will quicken it to become alive. That's where the manifestation of the word begin to become potent in your life. When you see a message or hear a message and see in your mind's eye a way out of poverty, you will become out of that poverty. Amen? Because God will then quicken his word to perform it. But when you don't see it, you don't see it. Let's go to Amos. And I want to conclude here. So basically, God approves of you based on what you see. And when he approves what you see, he is about to do a miracle in your life. Amen? Amos. And the Lord said unto me, unto me, Amos, what seest thou? And I said, a plumb line. Then said the Lord, Behold, I will set 
What? A plumb line in the midst of my people, Israel. And I will not again pass by them by, right? Pass, uh, pass by them anymore. The, you can go into the scripture and see tons of scriptures that talks about God is saying, what do you see? What are you seeing? Well, when you look in your life, personally, in your family, you look in the life, in, 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 your, real, in your spiritual life, what are you seeing? How are you seeing? When you look at the church, the state of the church, what are you seeing? When you look at the state of Christendom or Christianity, what are we seeing? And see, what we are seeing, if we are seeing right, God will take what we are seeing because we see well, he, he will begin to bring a way out. He said he sees a plumb line. And which means he saw right. And God said, because you saw a plumb line, I'm going to put a plumb line, a demarcation over my people. My people are crooked. They are falling away. They are living a life of sin. They are living a life of rebellion. The, the, the world, the state of the city is a mess. The state of the church is a mess. How are we seeing the church? Are we seeing the church as clean, as pure, as righteous, as holy, as peaceful, as everything going well? Or are we seeing that some things may be going well, but some are not? And as we see and we go engage God, God will begin to turn things around. Say, though I see my people, they've gone off with, wayward. But now I'm going to bring a plumb line, which means a straight line. Righteousness will return. Holiness will return. Orderliness will return. Peace will return. I will restore back my people. And I will never pass by them anymore. So when we are off the straight and narrow, God will pass by and we will not feel him. We will not see him. We will not experience him. But when we are in the plumb line, walking in the line, according to the sight that he's given us, God will remember you. I say God will remember you. In the name of Jesus. Verse 13, I conclude. And uh, we want to take time to pray. And I don't know what you see, but today, as we enter into a time of prayer, I want you to pray what you see or what you have seen today based on the message. And that which you see, if you see right, I believe that God is going to perform something marvelous, something powerful in your life, according to that which you see. Amen? Jeremiah 1.13. And the word of the Lord came unto me the second time, saying, What seest thou? And I said, I see a seeding spot, a seeding pot, and the face thereof is toward the north. Seeing plays a key role, a powerful role in our nation, in our church, in our city, in our individual life, in our family. They, now, this scene is talking about pot. Anytime, but most of the time, when the Bible talks about pot, it's talking about, see, pot, when you look at pot, in those who of you that have been in, in, and lived and worship other God, you know that pots play a spiritual role, a, a powerful spiritual role to the, in the demonic realm and in the things of the Lord. Now, he saw a pot, and when you look at the pot, the Lord said unto him, verse 14, Unto me, out of the north an evil shall break forth. Which means the pot is, see, when pots are meant to be boiling things, correct? Pots are meant to, to, to contain things. For those of us that grew up with our fridges in the past, I mean, we, we put water in our pot and put them under a tree so that it cools. That's our freezers. Uh, not freezer, but our fridges. The water will cool. If temperature is hot and you put water in a, a clay pot, it cools down the temperature. So it is meant to contain things. But in the, the devil, an uh, evil spirit or people, rather for evil, they use pot to contain souls of people. Do you know your soul can be kept in a pot? And they will be pronouncing destruction. destruction and you will be doing everything and working hard, but you don't see where you're progressing. You're doing many, many things you don't see. I mean, your, your life will be just like this, and it's not that you are lazy, it's not that you are not smart, but, but the, God is saying, because you have seen this spot that is placed in the north, he says that, then the Lord said, out of the north an evil shall break forth upon all the inhabitants of the land. For lo, I will call all the families of the kingdoms of the north, 
said the Lord, and they shall come, and they shall set everyone his throne at the entering of the gates of Jerusalem, and against all the walls of thereof, around about, and against all the cities of. But I pray that when your eyes are open to see well, if you God, I mean, if anything has placed you in a pot. Evil has placed you in a pot that you will come out of that pot. That pot will be shattered and broken into pieces in the name of Jesus. People that, uh, when you go to places where they, they worship the devil or worship demons, you, they are shrines. They place pots there. On the altars, they place pots there. Because they understand, even the people of the world uh, that practice the demonic things understand the, 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 the place of a pot. But I pray that no pot shall contain your destiny in the name of Jesus. Any pot that your name has been pronounced into it, we shatter it by the power of the Holy Ghost. Stand to your feet and I want you to begin to understand that the spiritual state of your life shall become better than ever because God has opened your eyes to see that you are not created to waste life and to be living a life worth, a worthless life and living a life not fulfilling your destiny, but God has brought you onto this earth to fulfill a destiny. I pray that your eyes be open to see your state and where you stand. If Even if you see things that are grim, I pray that God will open your eyes to see a way out in the name of Jesus. Begin to pray and begin to talk to the Lord in the name of Jesus. Discernment with the eyes. From where your eyes shall see, so will you be set free. As you see yourself set free from addiction, you will be free in the name of Jesus. And you are free in the name of Jesus. As you see yourself come out of poverty in the name of Jesus. Not It may not be financial, material poverty, but spiritual poverty. There is spiritual poverty. Though one reads the Bible, comes to church, but do not understand the things of God. I pray that you become rich in the word, rich in prayer, rich in revelation, rich in understanding. Pray that the spirit of the Lord uh, who has called you, who has for, come upon you, uh, just like he came on, uh, he came on onto the formless um, and, 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 and void, the land that was void, the earth that was void, and creative things begin to take place. Um, may the Lord God uh, cause his spirit to come upon you uh, and to come upon me, uh, even though now we may be formless, uh, we may be void of understanding, uh, but I declare that in the mighty name of Jesus, uh, let your eyes be open. I declare, just like God, the Lord says, uh, let there be light. Uh, and there was light because the Spirit came upon the earth. Uh, let the Spirit of God pray that the Holy Ghost will come upon you. Uh, come upon you so that God can speak His creative word into your life. His creative word into your situation. His creative word uh, that He is about to perform His word. Uh, he said, as you see it, uh, so will I perform it. Uh, as you see it, uh, will I perform it. And uh, uh, He will be quick to perform his word. The word of God become a, real, a reality when we see the word active in our life. When we see the word active in our family. When we see the word active in our church. Pray that the word of God will become potent in your life, in your family, in the church, in the name of Jesus. And as we see the word of God, the word of God that says that mighty man of valor, that woman of valor, come out of hiding and, and take your rightful place and lead the people and lead the church to victory. Come out of your hiding and lead the church to its victory. You can see yourself out, uh, out of weakness, uh, out of uh, 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 a life of uh, fear. Take yourself out of here because you see that there is a way out of fear. For fear shall not have power over you. The Bible says that uh, for God has not given us of fear, but he has given us spirit of power, love, and sound mind. Pray that the, as the word of God has come, that you see that love of God in you, that you see that love of God in your family, that you see that love of God in your child, that you see that love of God in the church again, where there is no hope, because the Lord himself has opened your eyes to see his word in the making. How God say he will be quick in, he will be quick to perform his word concerning that which we see in the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Church, what seest thou? Son, what seest thou? Brother, what seest thou? Sister, what seest thou? God is asking, what do you see for your life? 
What do you see in your life? What do you see around you? What do you what are you seeing in the church? What are you seeing among your friends? What are you seeing in our city? What do you see in our nation? I want you to begin to pray that Lord, let my eyes see right. Begin to pray, church. Pray your if you have to lay your hands on your eyes, please do that your eyes will be open to see right. Because it is how when we see right is where victory is where miracles and signs and wonders and breakthroughs take place. Pray that your eyes will be open to see right. Pray that your mind's eye will see. Lay your hands upon your mind if you want your uh, mind to be open to see right. And pray over your mind. That your mind, the eyes that are inside your mind shall be able to see. There are eyes that are not visible. The eyes, the invisible eyes that are in your, that are in your mind shall be open. That you, you and I will be seen like Jeremiah. You and I will be seen like uh, Amos. You and I will be seen like Ezekiel. Pray that your mind's eyes be open. Pray that your mind's eyes be open to see for your life and your destiny and your calling and your ministry. And your giftings will begin to, to operate according to that which you see. Pray that the Spirit of the Lord will move upon that formless mind, that formless eyes, that void. Your eyes are void when they look at things you don't see properly. Your mind is void when you think about things you can't think straight or think properly. Your mind is clouded. Pray that your mind, the Spirit of the Lord will move upon the surface of your mind. The Spirit of the Lord will move over the surface of your eyes the spirit of the Lord will move over the surface of your ears that you hear right pray and touch every part of your body that is gaze a gate to discern the discerning gate your mouth your nose your eyes your ears your brains your palms and your feet pray in the name of Jesus we are asking the Lord we may be void we are alive but we are void we are alive but we are formless but we are asking according to Genesis chapter 1 verse 1 and 2 and 3 that we see oh God that when the, when the Holy Spirit moved upon the earth that was formless that was void you get, your word begin to become creative when you begin to speak let there be light there was light Light. And I declare in this room, uh, let there be light upon our countenance. Uh, let there be light upon our family. Uh, let there be light upon our marriages. Uh, let there be light upon our relationships. Uh, let there be light upon our children. Uh, let there be light upon the restored house chapel. Uh, let there be light upon every department in this ministry. Let there be light upon every leader, every worker in this ministry. In the name of Jesus. Uh, and we say, Lord, let your creative word uh, begin to become a real reality to perform your word to perform your power let the holy ghost uh, move upon this church uh, move upon the congregation move upon the leadership uh, move upon the workers uh, move upon every soul uh, every child uh, every man and woman in this house uh, in the name of jesus and cause life to come forth where the things that seem to be no not existent become a reality we declare that let everything that is not seen be manifest to the vis to our vision to our sight in the name of Jesus we call the things that seem to be not to become a reality in the name of Jesus father we thank you for your word and your message open my eyes Open the eyes of my heart, Lord. 